Okay, so now that we have started our A star algorithm, we will have to create the function for finding the path. And we will do this step by step. So the first thing we have to do is actually to add our start and our goal uh, to the algorithm so that we know where we need to go from and where we need to go to. And besides that, we would like to be able to follow along as, um, as the algorithm progresses. So we'd like to be able to see what the algorithm actually does. So we will try to color our tiles. So we will be creating a, um, a class that is not meant for the gameplay. And it's a class or a script that we can actually just delete later because we don't need it. Uh, but for now, we will be creating our algorithm so that we can click. Um, let's see if it runs. So that we can click one tile here, for example, and then another tile here. And then we find the path between the two of them uh, by pressing space, for example. Normally, we would uh, just be spawning monsters here and then would find the path from up here to here. But to make sure that everything works, we will use some debugging so that we can click the tiles and find a path between them. Okay, so for this to work, we will have to create a new script. So right click in your script folder, click create and create a C sharp script. And you can name this script um, a start debugger, I guess. Just try it. Try one more time. A A star debugger. So this is only for debugging, right? We don't need it for anything else. Then we're going to create a new um, game object up here and create empty and call it debugger. So this is our debugger game object, and we just need to take the A star debugger and add it as a um, component to this debugger up here. Actually, we can call it A star just to ha keep the same naming convention. Okay, so now that we have the debugger, we will have to, basically we will have to find start and our goal, right? So we can open up the a star debugger and in here we can make a new function called private void click tile. Okay, and we will have to create two points. We'll have to make a private point uh, point and this point should be called goal and let's see we have a point here should be able to find I think there's something wrong with my script give me one second I need to close my script editor and open it again so that it can find my mono behavior there we go yeah so now this one lets up blue okay so we have our point, this is our goal, and then we're going to make another point, private point, and call that start. Basically, I could also use do like this, start, comma, goal, to keep it on one line. There we go. Now we have two points, we have a start and a goal, and we need to set these points so we know where we need to go from and where we need to go to. Okay. So to do this, we will have to do a raycast um, from our mouse because we don't want the tiles. We don't want to add code to the tiles uh, to handle this debugging. We only want to um, add some code in this debugger so that the rest of the game is independent of this. Or this this is debugging is independent, so we can delete it without messing up our game in the end. So we can make a if input dot get button get mouse button down so if we fire mouse button one if we click mouse button one the first uh, mouse button here on your mouse well then we would like to do a raycast and a raycast is an invisible ray from any point in the game out in the game world and we can check if that ray hits something uh, in the game and right now we want to make an invisible ray from our mouse position in the game towards the screen so towards our um, our tiles so when we hit a tile we can select that tile as our starting position so we make a raycast 2d because it's a 2d game we have called hit and it's equal to physics 2d it's very important to use physics 2d instead of 3d or not just normal physics raycast okay so where do we want to uh, want to create this raycast from we want to create it from the camera that main so our main camera and we want to take a screen coordinate to world point and we want to do it on the input dot mouse position 
and direction that's just vector2.0 just forward in our world there we go so this line of code creates array cards from the mouse position which is like here where my mouse is right in forward to towards the tiles and then we say whatever it happened in this hit okay so whatever this ray cast hits is returned to this hit here so we can examine this hit um, to figure out what actually happened I'm just going to zoom out so it's easier for you to see the line so this is the whole line you can pause and, and write it down okay I'm going to zoom back in so you can see what I'm writing okay so the next thing we have to say if our hit dot collider so we hit something if the collider isn't null, which means that we actually hit something in the game world. If we hit something, then we need to make a reference to whatever we hit. So, um, then we can say tile script, GMP, uh, actually, let's just say if hit collider isn't null and... No, actually, let's do like this. Tile script, temporary is equal to hit dot get component hit dot collider sorry hit dot collider get component tile script yeah so we hit something then we try to acquire the tile script on whatever we hit if we hit a tile then this one will be equal to the tile script we just hit I mean the tile on the ground right so let's say that I'm playing my game click this tile here then this tile we will get a reference to this actual tile uh, tiles um, tile script that is sitting on it right okay when we have that reference we can check well did we actually get a tile script let's say we click a tower or something well then we don't need to ac um, acknowledge that that click so we just check if temporary isn't null so if it isn't null then we actually hit a tile if it is null um, then we didn't hit a tile because we only get the tile script from a tile so if it isn't null, then we need to decide what to do. And I actually just changed my mind up here. Right now we have a point, but there's no point in having a point up here. Um, so let's make this into a tile script. So we actually just have a start and a goal based on the tile script because the tile script contains everything we need, right? So if it isn't null, let me say if start is null, then we say start equals temporary. So first time we click a tile in the game, then we set it equal to the start function to start position. Oh, sorry. When we click a tile in the game first time, then we set that tile, or then we set our start equal to that tile we just clicked, and then we say else if um, goal is null, then we say goal equals temporary here. Yeah. Okay. First time we click a tile. Our start will be equal to that tile. The next tile we click, our goal will be equal to that one. Um, yeah. And first mouse button here is actually our right click, not not our left click. I think I said right click in the beginning. So if we turn the mouse here, it's actually this mouse button, not this one. Um, so yeah. Uh, so we are going to right click to set start and goal uh, in our game, because we want to use first mouse click maybe to actually set our towers right um yeah okay so now we can set start and goal let's try to make this actually let's try to serialize this so we can see it serialize field save then you can see what happens here if we stop our game so remember to save your your script and serialize it we don't need to serialize it just to show you that it actually works um, and what else we need to call the function right now click tiles never executed this if statement is never executed so we need to go to update and right click tile there we go and save okay so let's play the game in your hierarchy you can find your a star debugger on the a star debugger there's something called start and goal so let's see what happens if I click a tile then nothing happens. Oh, sorry, I need to right click. Then sand is our start, and I click here. Then our grass is now our goal. So now I can take two tiles and set them 
as start and goal by clicking them. So now we know where we need to start our algorithm and where we need to end our algorithm search, right? Okay. With that in place, we can actually add some visual stuff to this. So to do that, we can actually just um, change the sprite renderer's color uh, on uh, the sprite. Yeah, the sprite's color on tiles actually. So we can make start green and then go red or something, right? So let's see. We have our start here. So we can actually say that our start dot sprite renderer. Okay. So our start is a tile script, and we would like to access the sprite renderer on the tile script. So we can actually go to the tile script and see we have a sprite renderer here, which is private. But I would like to access it from other scripts. So we can just make it into a property. Let's just write PROP sprite renderer. And then write sprite renderer with capital S. Like so. Okay. And then we try to delete the other one. Then there should be some complaints here, some errors. It's four errors where it asks um, about see a sprite render just change them to capital S the places where it complains about um, sprite render it non capital and then we can go back to our a star debugger right start dot sprite render <coughs> sorry dot color equals and what color should we have I can say new color 32 and the RGB is 255 132 255 so this is the color of red or something uh, or green can't remember actually um, and then we can go down here underneath take gold sprite render that color new color and set it to 255 0, 0, 255 there we go so let's try to save this and jump into unity and let's see what happens when we click something let's right click this one turns red and then right click this one also turns red so what is wrong here let's see why it actually changes back black like, back okay I know why it's changed back of course uh, it's because when we click on something and we move the mouse out then it changes the color back to uh, back to white because we have this thing where we can place our tiles right and when we move the tower away from a tile it reverses the color back to the original one right so we need to do something about that so that we can click somewhere and then set the color um, on somewhere else. So to fix this, I think we can simply go to child script and make a property. This is just going to be a temporary property. Make a property called as a bool and call it debugging or just call it debug. Ah, might call it debugging so that it doesn't interfere with anything else. So somewhere we have on mouse over and it's empty and everything right here. So we need to say and and here and then say debug debugging so that if we are not debugging then we can change the color of the tiles by mousing over them. So let's just take this one copy it and paste it down here as well. So now it's not now it shouldn't change color on the tile when we're debugging and we can also go to tower button and uh, tower button a star debugger and then we need to say goal dot debugging equals true and goal dot uh, start dot debugging equals true so when we color a tile somehow we set it to debugging to true so that the tile script will not change the color on it yeah there we go let's try one more time see if it works right click red still change color somewhere else we're changing our color sorry about that let's see um, there on mouse exit here down here okay so let's just take this if statement here or this debugging so if we're not debugging then we change it back black to back to white and black to white there we go so let's try to jump back into unity and test this just right click on tile and then right click on another tile so now you can see the colors stay there 
so this is my start and this is my goal but I'm actually not happy about the colors um, because you can't really see the actual color here um, I'm not sure what color this should be but it, it's kind of odd because the um, yellow color is in the background of, of the tile here so I think I want to create a sprite you can download the sprite from the uh, description below the video but I'm going to create a white sprite and then change the sprite on the actual um, tile so that the color is more um, is easier, easier to see so let's try to do that so from off screen I am going to drag in a sprite which is just a blank square so this is just a tile that is blank it's just into my sprites folder here and into the tiles folder here I have a blank sprite so I'm going to go to my a star debugger and I'm gonna go to open the script here and I'm going to go to the top remove the serialized field because we don't need to serialize these and then I'm going to make a private uh, sprite and I'm going to call it uh, um, blank tile and I'm going to serialize that one instead there we go and then I'll go back to unity and take wait for this one to update take the blank sprite and pull it up here so uh, my a star debugger has a reference to the blank tile and then I'll go back here and say start dot sprite render dot sprite equals blank tile and down here I'm going to say goal dot sprite render dot sprite equals blank tile there we go so now we have a blank tile on the start and a blank tile on the goal let's try to see how it looks now it looks better when we right click let's do this so I right click and that looks very odd because it's way too big um, so let's click on the blank one and see we need to put this one at 300 pixels as well and apply and let's see we have the pivot point needs to be top left as well and apply that as well and let's try one more time to see apparently it's an orange color I have so I right click here turns orange and right click here it turns um, yeah it, it turns red so my start is orange and my goal is red um, I'm not sure if I want to keep orange I guess it is fine um, actually you can just go and, and change your colors to whatever you want you can go and change some instead of new color 32 you can say L equals color 32 dot ah, actually I can only say color dot uh, green for example but looks we can always change it later Let's see yeah that's fine okay so start and go so now we have a start position and a goal position and in the next video we will start the actual a star algorithm search by finding all our neighbors around the start position so thank you very much for watching and remember to follow me on twitter like my facebook page and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done already um, also remember that Inscope Studios is a community found page so all your support is very important to me um, you can support me in different ways you can support me on Patreon and if you do so then you can get every single project that I've ever created um, or you can also go to the bottom link on the screen right here to get one of my projects as a standalone product